Okay, um, so I want to uh, discuss how to find parametric equation for an ellipsoid. I'm going to start by reminding you what the uh, parametric equation is for an ellipse. So before I do that, remember that the parametric equation for a circle of radius 1 is, this is just in the plane, cosine t, sine t. Um, okay, so let's start from this parameterization for a circle and see if we can end up with this parameterization for an ellipse. Now notice that here, the x-coordinate squared, so this is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate, the x-coordinate squared plus a y-coordinate squared is equal to one. That's, that's what a circle is. Okay, uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now for the ellipse, we need to have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. So the way that we adjust this, well, we can make a few guesses, but I'll save you the time. We'll just call this a cosine t, b sine t. And notice that if you do the x coordinate squared plus a y coordinate squared, what do you get? Well, you get a squared cosine squared t plus b squared sine squared t. And the defining equation for ellipse says to divide the x part by a squared, divide, divide the y part by b squared, and we see that this is equal to 1. Okay, and I think you guys uh, have seen this before, maybe in Calc 1 or Calc 2. Um, and I think it's something that's familiar enough now that I don't need to say much more other than this, other than the fact that we started with the thing that we knew, and to get something that was very similar to that, we just kind of made these adjustments. Okay, so now we want to find the parametric equation for the ellipsoid. So remember, an ellipsoid is very much like a circle. You know, an ellipse, an ellipsoid to a uh, sphere is exactly what an ellipse is to a circle. So it's like an ovular sphere. So remember that the parametric equation for the sphere was r of phi theta. These are these are the spherical these are the phi and the theta from spherical coordinates. This is sine phi cosine theta sine phi sine theta cosine phi. Sorry, this is cosine theta. Theta. Okay, um, and we've seen before that if you do the x coordinate squared plus a y coordinate squared plus a z coordinate squared, it's equal to 1. But notice in the equation for an ellipsoid, it's not x squared plus y squared plus z squared that's equal to 1, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. Okay, so now we're going to do something similar. Well, we're just going to multiply. Sorry, that should be a parenthesis. We're just going to multiply the x coordinate by a, the y coordinate by b, and the z coordinate by c. So this is going to be a sine phi cosine theta, b sine phi sine theta, c cosine phi. And notice that, again, this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate, this is the z coordinate. So x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared. Well, what is this? This is a, sorry, a squared sine squared phi cosine squared theta. And well, what happens? Well, this just turns out to be uh, sine squared phi cosine squared theta plus sine squared phi sine squared theta plus cosine squared phi. Uh, and this is just equal to one. Okay, so what I'm saying is that this, this equation right here, this is the parameterization for the ellipsoid that has x intercepts equal to plus or minus a, y intercepts equal to plus or minus b, c intercepts equal to plus or minus c. So let's look at a specific example. Um, let's say that a is equal to 1. Whoa, a is equal to b. That's not right. a is equal to 1. 
B is equal to two and C is equal to three. Okay, and now let me share with you this neat, this nice tool that we have. Okay, so this is uh, GeoGebra. I got it just by uh, doing a Google search for GeoGebra um, vector parameterization or something like that. Uh, here's a YouTube video you can watch. Maybe if I remember, I will put it um, put a link on my webpage. But anyway, let's look at what's going on here. So for X, so here you have to use U and V. So U, uh, the U in here is the same as our theta. The V is the same as our phi. Okay, uh, so X is just uh, sine phi cosine theta. Um, y is just so this is b sine v sine theta so this is two sine v sine or sine v sine theta or sine v sine u in this language um or with these variables and z is just three cosine uh phi or three cosine phi and this is the ellipsoid that we get uh, but notice also it has these very helpful grid lines so remember what i said the grid lines were so if you hold one of the parameters constant and let the other one vary uh, then this uh, that's what the grid lines are so let's look at the so let's look at the v this is the the um, the red one corresponds to holding a um, to holding one of the, uh, the the phi constant. So if you hold phi constant, let's say we hold phi equal to about uh, about uh, pi over two. This is about pi over two. Okay. So if you hold uh, phi equals a pi over two, and we let theta vary, we're going to get these ellipses. That's exactly what we would expect. So what does this mean? If we hold phi constant, in other words, this right here, and we let uh, theta vary, we're going to go around this red ring, okay? And similarly, uh, if we hold, so this blue line here, this would be uh, representing holding theta constant. If we hold theta constant and then vary phi, we're going to go along this blue line here. Okay, so again, this is the red lines here would correspond to say latitude lines and the blue lines would correspond to longitude lines. You know, if we were to think about this as, a, as an egg-shaped earth or something like that. And we can make it even more Earth-like if we just actually do make it a sphere. Okay, so now we get a sphere. You can use your the roller ball on the mouse or something else I'm sure to zoom in. And now we really do get uh, latitude and longitude lines. Now notice that the blue, this represents um, um, it represents when you have a fixed value of theta and it's going to look at all of the values of phi. So remember phi, the way we have it, just goes from zero to pi over four because that's really all we need. And so that's why you just get half of the line here. Okay, so if phi is equal to zero, you're up here. As phi goes to pi over two, you go all the way down here. Okay, uh, and then similarly, to, so, so to get on the other side, it's not that the other side of the sphere is missed, but if we vary theta, in other words, u in this case, now that's how we get the other side. Okay, so if you if you want to have the whole grid line, then all you need to do is just make uh, just make the phi one go up to two pi instead of just pi. Okay, and now you get the whole grid line. Okay, and now the red and blue lines really do kind of look more like latitude and longitudes. Okay, so the blue lines, in other words, for a fixed uh, for a fixed value of theta, and we let phi vary. So we're fixing theta and letting phi vary from zero all the way down to pi over two to pi, uh, back up to three pi over four, and then uh, or uh, this is pi. This is um, sorry, three pi over two, all the way up to two pi. Uh, these are called great circles. Okay. Anyways. All right, so this is the vector parameterization for an ellipse. Um, added benefit, we got to see the grid lines using this cool toy here. So uh, I guess the bad thing is you didn't get to make fun of how bad that I draw. <laughs>